Well, hello there, folks. Welcome to today's video, which is all about is self-reflection a waste of time as a trainer and presenter? Now, it's a bit of a strange question because the natural answer is, yes, yeah, it's a great idea to self-reflect. But the thing is, we need to appreciate that in order for self-reflection to actually be powerful and a useful and worthwhile experience or activity, there, there has to be some certain elements in place for it to be more than just a tick-the-box activity or just go through the motions, right? And what we find is that if these elements are not in place, then essentially it can become a narcissistic activity of looking in the mirror and going, I am awesome, or everyone else is at fault and I've got no part to play in the success of my workshop or my training sessions, right? So self-reflection, it needs to be done with the right intent. It needs to be done with the right mentality and the right mindset, right? So in today's video, it's also a bit of trainer wisdom so that you can make sure that whenever you're doing self-reflection, you're actually going to get some value out of it, right? And for me, it's not about, you know, do you stand in the mirror and do a five-minute, you know, like complete analysis of your session. It's more so what have you done differently since your last one? And what will you be doing differently in your next one compared to what you just did as a result of what you noticed, right? And so great training presenters, coaches, facilitators have that mentality of consistent ongoing development of their approach, right? So it's not about standing in the mirror and going, oh, yes, I followed my session plan. I guess I did this. Yes, I did that. And yes, everything worked just fine, right? No, it's more so a case of, okay, what did you notice that didn't click, didn't flow? What's the potential reason behind that? What is the potential solution that you can bring in to solve that and preempt that for next time? That's the kind of mentality you want to have in regards to self-reflection, right? So a couple of thoughts. Number one, you should never, ever take the uh, performance of your participants personally. Whatever happens, happens. Don't take it as a complete reflection back on you, right? Definitely you've got a part to play, but there's a lot of things that can be happening in the room. Now, the other thing is, the other reason why that's important is that as a trainer, presenter, receiving feedback or giving feedback to ourselves can be a little bit confronting, right? So we want to make sure that we kind of take it on as a third party and go, okay, cool. What can the presenter learn from that experience? Not a case of what do I need to fix about myself, right? Next key point, you need to have a solutions-focused mentality. What I mean by that is you don't want to be going, oh, that didn't work, that didn't work, that didn't work, and it's never, ever going to fix itself or it's never going to get better, so to speak, right? So you want to have a mentality of, yeah, okay, cool, that happened, and it's possible to make sure it never happens again. Yes, that happened, and we can definitely create a solution around that challenge, that problem, right? You want to be focused on the solution, not just stuck in the problem thinking you'll never fix it. Next key point, you've got to be curious about what didn't work. You've got to have the humility to ask yourself, okay, that didn't work, why didn't it work, and let me at least acknowledge that that could have been better. Maybe your learners got confused. Maybe they got overwhelmed. Maybe the activity didn't work. Maybe wrong song, wrong time. Maybe wrong instruction. It could be anything at all. But you have to be willing to be curious about what didn't work. Don't fall into the trap of just ticking the box and go, yeah, everything was fine. Well, was it really? What were the things that you didn't notice that actually didn't go quite well? And be willing to go, okay, yeah, I need to make a note of that so that in the future we can adjust and make developments over time. Next one, you have to have access to new ideas, right? Now, this has been a tricky one because you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. I'll say it again. You don't know what you don't know. So it's kind of something simple as, for example, 
your self intro. Maybe you are absolutely self sabotaging it when you are actually doing it. But you don't know that because also you don't have any resources available to know how you could actually make it better. Maybe you haven't yet bought my book, right? But the thing is, we don't know what we don't know, right? And maybe, you know, people are being disengaged at particular points and you're like, well, that's the way it's always been done and there's no solutions to that problem, right? But if you come across new resources and new solutions, you're like, oh, wow, I could use that there and transform that, right? But you've got to be constantly looking for new resources, new solutions, right? New solutions to current problems. <laughs> you have to actually apply the new resources you come across, right? So self-reflection only actually has value if you use your insights, your discoveries as a springboard to new solutions that you actually implement. What a crazy idea, right? So you actually want to implement the new solutions, right? And if you do, then you have brand new discoveries and you as a trainer grow and develop yourself. Next and final point. One of the tricky things is that when you get somebody else to evaluate you, you are only again getting their perspective to fight to the limits of their knowledge, right? So you need to appreciate that whatever they say, you gotta um you got someone that sits in and you know does review on you. Well, they are only going to pick up what they notice, but not necessarily going to have solutions to the problems, right? So you want to find a mentor or coach that you can learn from, that you can take your problems to, that are going to have solutions that you can take on board and use, right? But having someone actually sit in your room, again, you need to make sure that you pick that person that really is someone that you do look up to that you are inspired by and that has higher level knowledge than you, right? You don't want to be taking on feedback from someone that doesn't know how to present, doesn't know how to train, and potentially even doesn't know your topic as well as you do, right? So the thing is, as a trainer, presenter, coach, facilitator, self-reflection, great activity, but it needs to be done with the right mindset. Now, myself personally, I simply ask myself two questions after every presentation. What am I really happy about with what I just did? What was something I did that went really, really well? Second, what's one thing I would do differently if I ever did that session again? And that encourages me to look for one thing that potentially didn't land or work as well as it could, and then sparks a new thought about, okay, cool, how can I approach that differently? And if I don't have an answer for that, I go looking. What a crazy idea, right? I actually go looking. Maybe there's a solution out there that I'm not aware of, but I've got the humility to actually ask the question, right? So self-reflection. Do it for the process of actually going, okay, what didn't work? How can I make it work even better next time? Hope you got some value from the video, folks. As always, like, comment, share. Let's get the message out there as we look to inspire new generations, new thoughts in the world of training and presenting in Australia and globally as well. And yes, there is absolutely a chapter on self-reflection in my book. You can definitely check it out. But I just want to touch on these ideas because I see a lot of people filling out self-reflection forms, but then they keep training the same way they've always trained. I'm like, did they really get value from that self-reflection? But often, it's not their fault. They just have not been exposed to higher level techniques, concepts, and training ideas. Thanks for watching, team, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.